Now, fair Hippolyta. Our nuptial hour draws on apace, for happy days bring in another moon. But, oh, methinks, how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers by desires, like to a stepdame or a dowager. Four days will quickly steep themselves in nights. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our surroundings. Go for the straight. Stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Awake the perch and nimble spirit of mirth. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love doing thee injuries, but I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revel. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, Sir Aeneas. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my daughter. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love and stolen the impression of her fantasy with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, conceits. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, into stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so that she will not hear before your grace. Consent to marry with Demetrius. <laughs> ha! <laughs> I beg the ancient privilege of Athens that she is mine and I may dispose of her, which shall either be to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, meaning provided. <clears throat> what say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself, he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the word. I would my father looks, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, or abjure forever the society of men. What? <laughs> Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth. Examine well your blood, whether, if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, Brutalist moon. <laughs> so will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patch up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, I would prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar protest for I austerity and single life. Oh, relent, sweet Hermia, Lysander, yield thy prey title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scorn me, Lysander. True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love, shall render him. And she is mine. And all my right of her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. 
My love is more than this. My fortune's every way is fairly great, if not advantage, as Demetrius is. Nor is more than all these hosts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. <laughs> Why should I not then prosecute my rights? Demetrius, all about you to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. But being full of self affairs, my mind did lose But Demetrius, come and come in peace. You shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. <coughs> Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means you may accentuate, to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my apologize. <laughs> what cheer, my love. <laughs> Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial, and confer with you something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire to follow you. Fast. Do you like the want of rain, which I could well but you from the tempest of my eyes? Ah, um, me, for aught that could never read, could never hear my tale of history, the course of true love never did run smooth. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny, then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears for fancy followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, gentle Hermia. I have a, a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. Her Athens, her house is remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? Into that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth from thy father's house, and in the wood, a league without the town, for I did meet thee once with Helena to observe us to more of a man. There, I will stay for thee. My good life, Winter, I swear to thee by Jupiter's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever with his <laughs> In that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow I will truly lie me with thee. Promise that. Friends and stranger companies. 
How do you the lines are written? If it be, give it me. Or I'm supposed to say. Oh, you may do an extent for, for it's nothing but. Right. Oh, and then you play the line too. Oh my god. Oh, right. that hoodie man's hard to get in here. I'll roar that and make the duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. Oh, but you should do it too terribly. You would frighten the ladies and the duchess that they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. <laughs> that <laughs> that every mother's son. Every mother's son. I grant you. Friends, if you were to frighten the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my boy's soul. I will roar you gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you to wear a nightingale. I roar. Good luck. 
Percy. I will not part with you. How long in the wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our rounds and see our moonlight revels, go with us. <coughs> if not, shun me, and I will spare you of your taunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with him. Not for thy fairy king. <sighs> Fairies away, we shall try downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle pup, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song, and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember that very time I saw it, but thou couldst not. Flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal throned by the west, and used his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Yet marked I where the golden key fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love moved. And maidens call it love in idleness. <laughs> <laughs> Fetch me this flower, the herb I show thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make a man or a woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a leap. I'll put a girdle around about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch the tonic when she is a seer white, and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon. Be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear the conference. Oh, I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is life fair and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slay of me. Thou told me they were stolen unto this wood, yet here I am, wood within this wood, because I cannot be with Hermia. Hence could be gone to follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. But yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Oh. Do I see you fair? Or rather not in plainest truth do I say I do not know I cannot love you? Even for that do I love you the more. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not to much I hate you the nice beard, for I am sick when I look on you. And I am sick, I look not, I move. Oh, see, you do not much to leave the city in the hands of one that loves you not. <laughs> <laughs> to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich work of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege for that. Therefore, it's not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in night. For God, this would like a truth of company. For <laughs> <laughs> all the world, then how can it be said I'm alone when all the world is set to turn on me? I'll run from thee and hide in the brakes and leave you to the mercy of wild beasts. <laughs> I shall be here to explode. I know a bank, 
on the wild thyme blows, where ox lips in the nodding violet leaves, white over the canopy of the luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers of dances and delight, and there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take that some of it and see through this robe. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on, affected with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her <coughs>
Lysander? What removed? Lysander? Lord? What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? Alack, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. <laughs> no, that I well perceive you are not an eye. Oh. Either death or you, I'll find immediately. <laughs> Sweet, so hath thy breath, my dearest, this be dear. 
But hark! A voice! Stay thou but here a while. By and by I will appear to thee. A stranger fear has that air play the air. Oh, uh, um, must I speak now? Aye, Mary must you, for we must understand that he is in your appointing me and is to come again. Um, um most radiant pyramids, lily white of hue, as a red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile, and eke most lovely Jew. Oh, as truest as, truest horse that'll never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninus! Tomb, man! You must not speak that yet. That you answered, Pyramus. Must you speak all your part excuse and all? Pyramus, enter! Your cue is past. It's never tired. Oh, um, oh, as truest as truest horse that'll never tire. If I were fair for this be, I were only thine. Ah! Good master. 
Your name, honest gentleman, Mustard Seed. <laughs> I pray you, good Master Mustard Seed, I promise your kindred hath made my eyes water and <laughs> I shall desire you a more acquaintance with Master Mustard Seed. Come now, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon he thinks looks with watery eye, and as she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity, I will bring you silent. <laughs>